This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services. Winter is here, and I encourage you to save your back this year. Contact Keller's today and get a quote for residential or commercial snow removal. And also, it is never too early to start thinking about spring. COVID has put a delay on so many things. Do not delay in getting yourself set up with one of the best in the business when it comes to getting your yard looking its best. Visit Keller's at their location on Kern Street in Exeter, Pennsylvania, just down the street from Blue Ribbon Dairy, or head over to their social media pages for more information. Welcome to the PopGo Project Podcast, a platform for the discussion and discovery of arts and entertainment. We focus on highlighting people and events that add value to the world around us. Visit us on all social media platforms by searching The PopGo Project or visit our website at thepopgoproject.com. Welcome to the show and thank you so much for listening. We're live. Cool. Neil, Neil Trauma, what is going on? Hey, how are you, my friend? We haven't spoken in a very long time outside of the stray text message, which generally equates to Neil, come get the beer that is at my house that I'm supposed to pick up. For, Where are we going on? Is it three months? For three months now. Yeah. Neil. Well, you know, it's not often that I'm near the Popco estate. All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much stay strictly in Lackawanna County, especially this time of year. I don't well, I don't stray. What I should do is I should give it to Hoover. And no, then he don't can do that. Oh, yeah, right. No, he won't drink it. He's a it's true. He's a Keystone Light yeah. Budweiser guy. He's That's not true. gonna it's, dip into the it the, is not a case of Miller High Life, so he's probably not interested. He's he's not gonna touch the gold that is Cape May Brewing Company. Yeah, I see you got that beautiful Cape May growler behind you. How about it? I, I Cape May myself out tonight just for you? I've got uh I am drinking a Cape May. IPA. It is not one of yours. Is it one of mine? That's my next not, question. It is not. This is uh, one of the last few cans that I have from my trip back in November when I picked up the beer for you. Um, I have also got the uh, infamous uh, Cape May Mop, Mop water. water. Not one of yours. One of the last remaining ones that I uh, that I purchased uh, from uh, that trip. I got the uh, the uh, Cape May Growler. I just I've noticed the hat. Cape just May. Pat, I, I did this for you. Yeah, that's a good call. In fact, you know what? I feel like I'm, now this is going to be so professional as I dive off screen, but I'm going to do something here. That's fine. Do it. So uh, while Neil is doing whatever he's doing, Neil Trauma is the uh, midday DJ on NEPA's classic rock station, Rock 107, one of the heritage stations in old I, school. Okay. You just old ruined school. You just, ruined, company you, just, you just ruined my entire uh, setup for you. Go and... for it. Go back and tell them who I am. <laughs> You're the midday guy. Midday DJ. Rock 107. NEPA's Heritage Classic Rock Station. Yeah. Uh, one of the only classic rock stations in the market. And if it's, yeah, if it's... pretty sure it's the only classic rock station if you really want to get technical yeah. based on what is and isn't classic rock. And we could do a whole show on what is and isn't classic rock probably, but... Yeah, we won't do that, though. No one wants to hear about that. But, Neil, I mean, uh, you know, you are typically, you know, one of the top DJs in your day part. So It's radio... true. It, it, it blows my mind. It, in radio... It really does. Radio land, there's there's day parts. There's the morning drive, there's the midday, there's the afternoon. And um, you know, Rock 107 has uh a great long-standing um uh crew. Yeah, you know, prospector in the morning, locking it down in your drive to work. You got you middays, lunchtime, and then you have Hoover in the afternoons taking you home. Yeah. And um, you guys have been there for a long time. I mean, we're going on, I think it's the 42nd anniversary just happened within the last couple of weeks, because this is usually birthday bash season, as you know very well. This is another year where we're not doing a birthday bash because they're still, you know, a little skittish about putting together an event like that with the pandemic ongoing. But there's definitely hope what's going to be back in the next year or two. Uh, but this is usually the season we celebrate our birthday because, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's February 20th. 20th I want to say, yeah. February, yeah, February 20th. 20th was the official launch of the station. And yeah, I mean, a great tradition of morning shows at Rock 107. Of course, Daniels and Webster for so many years. And 
prospector after a few little switches and tweaking with it here and there, took the helm of that show and he's ran with it. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be, you know, when I started middays, they told me, Neil, we're in a jam. We need you to fill in for the day. And they haven't got rid of me since. I'm still waiting for the day. Somebody says, hey, we finally hired that guy that we were going to hire. <laughs> It's going on so, like eight years now that I've been doing it. But, so you're yeah. working for you're working for free. Oh well, yeah, basically more <laughs> more so than anything. Not you're just filling a, a slot, yeah. right? Yeah, for eight years now, right? Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, you and I. And it's no secret you and I worked together. I think I was at Time Shamrock with the radio stations and the outdoor properties and all that kind of fun stuff for a collective seven or eight years. Um, I left the station's bittersweet moment uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you and I, I, you know, I would see you in passing. You'd walk in, you you do your, and I even do my if, thing and I leave. <laughs> and I may not even have been there. I may, I may have been out selling, making the station some money, you know, doing my job. So you were midday doing your job. So we would very randomly uh, cross paths. Um but I got to know you a little bit because you started a uh, show on ESPN radio Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. called the beer breakfast with Neil trauma. Yeah, it's a it's a pet project, a passion project, if you will, of me. Uh, and I do have to tip my hat to our GM, who you, of course, know and work alongside for many years, Terry Dietz. It was really his Terry brainchild. Dietz. Terry, Terry Dietz. He's, Terry's the one who said, you know, I want to start a localized block of programming on ESPN radio. And I think, you know, if we want to target guys, a show focused on beer would be perfect. And he looked around the halls and said, who's the biggest drunk here? And the decision probably came down to me and you, but you already had a show. So they said, well, Neil. Why don't you come on in and try to do this thing? And I've done it. And somehow we've survived pandemics and bans on having guests. And, you know, many shows happened in this room that I'm in right now, which is, you know, the laundry room of my house, basically, with this little handheld, you know, rinky dink microphone that I got in a panic when the <laughs> pandemic started from 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 Amazon. And uh, you know, it was just me going out and buying beer and drinking it on the air. But, you know, we try to we, we try to have some great guests and we're finally getting back into it with to go to breweries and bring brewers in. So it's a great show. I love it. And, uh, you know, I hope if people stumble upon us, they, they would enjoy it, too. Yeah, so it's uh, 9 a.m. ESPN Radio. What are the frequencies for that? Oh, gosh, I never remember, and I feel like they change. For the longest time, 6.30 a.m. in the Scranton area, 12.40 a.m. in Wilkes-Barre is the big 90, ones that are on the a.m. dial. 96.1? Yes. On FM? Yes. See, and still, the big thing, I really push because we also podcast it, too. But, but I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. You can also find it on the podcast section on Rock 107. Um, right. but I have had the, the privilege, the, uh, distinct honor of being a guest on your beer breakfast show many times. And we always joked, I never allowed you on the show when I had a show on 92.1, uh, that show got canceled. I quit. Uh, so I, you know, I said, you know, I have to get him on my podcast because I've been doing this for a little bit over a year and we've tried many times, Neil, we've we have. tried. And in I, fairness, this time, many of the cancellations were my fault and not yours. I think if we were to figure it out, I would say about 75% of the times the show didn't get recorded, it was my fault, if not more. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, there was good reason. I think you had a flood at one point. There was um, there was a time my house was almost on fire. I have had a child <laughs> in the meantime. I've got another one here who you probably heard screaming a few minutes ago. I said off air to John that the over-under on... Uh, number of run-ins by a toddler on the show is like three and a half. So we'll see how this goes. I am sitting in the direct line between the kitchen and the potty. So anything can happen here at this point. Yeah. That's good. That could be a wild, uh, a wild ride. You have uh, <laughs> two, two little yeah, girls, two and right? a half year old and uh, a five month old. What's it like being a girl dad? Uh, you know, I love being a girl dad. I mean, is the, is, is the secret out? Is anything embargoed here? To talk it, about the, we made the official Facebook okay. announcement. That's it's, what I thought. But yeah, it's, you, you know, know, so I could say now publicly, now. congratulations, my friend. Thank Welcome you very to the much. Two Child Club. It's, uh, it's uh, somehow the children double, but the work quadruples. I believe it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And in fact, I'm going to owe my wife something because I can hear what's going on in the other room right now. And it's not a fun <laughs> night here at the Trama House. We once again picked the perfect night to do this. Well, I just figured Popko will not be my friend if I cancel at the last minute again. So I'm like, well, you're like, with this one. I'm like, if he cancels again, I'm, I'm done. We're not yeah, going to reschedule. Yeah, he's, we're, we're, we're no we're, longer friends. He's going to drink my beer. 
<laughs> that's really that's what I would concern. do. Yes, I was yeah. going to drink your beer. Yeah, going to drink my K May beer. Can't have that. But uh, you know, it, I love being a girl dad. It is a lot of fun. Um, you're in trouble. First yeah, time. she's already mastered. She's already mastered the daddy, please. <laughs> Where do they learn this stuff? It's you know, like genetics. Like it is. It, it's something that they put in the diapers. I don't know. <laughs> It's in the womb. But hey, it's I a... do have beer here. I mean, I wouldn't be living up to my reputation, so I should crack this, right? Yeah, I mean, I I'm saw having... you take a sip, so there's no ceremonial cracking of the beer here like we do on my uh... show. It's just dive in. No, this isn't a beer show, so I, I didn't. I loaded it up with to... a uh, six pack of Victory Hop Devil for the occasion. And, I told uh, you, you should have got the the Dirt Wolf. That would have nah. put you. To, that would put you to bed. Yeah, well, we don't need that bedtime. You'd yeah, be in, that you'd be in the kids' bed. Yeah, but yeah, um, let's get this going here. Very professional. I got. I'm yeah, let's juggle the microphone keys. Pop it, pop it. Yeah, I was just Beautiful. thinking they don't they don't make a lot of beer in bottles anymore. They don't, but I love a bottle. Yeah, it's just in bottle. I 100 percent understand all the reasons why it should be in a can. Obviously, why don't you tell us, Neil? I mean, I think I know, but you're the okay. beer guy. Let's. let's well, tell I me. mean, light is really really bad for beer. You got to think of, of beer like a vampire. Yeah, it does not want sunlight. And that's why your beer bottles are typically brown or they're green. Uh, it's to keep the light out, which preserves the flavor. It's why a beer like Corona kind of has that quote unquote skunky skunk taste yeah. because the sun goes through the clear bottles and uh, it definitely changes the flavor of the beer. So a can is better for that. It's just better overall for sealing it off and it'll last a much longer time sealed in the metal of the can. So that's why a lot of your craft beers, like the old school beer drinkers will see you with these big cans and think like, what is this? Is this like, you know, this is a 40 or is this like some kind of junk beer? But it's not. It's super high quality beer because that's honestly the best way to preserve it. But there is something to me at a beer in a bottle. I just I love the way the bottle feels in your hand. It's just the, the, the beer bottle experience to me. I don't like drinking it out of a can. Yeah, I mean, pour. I'm not I'm not going to drink a can of beer or out of a can rather um unless it's a Miller Lite. I, I'm talking yeah. like I'm out camping with the guys sure. in the woods. I'm drinking yeah, out of If a, it's like Natty Light and I'm uh, at a at a tailgate party, I mean whatever, but yeah. I mean, they've been, you know, even those who have bottled beer, they've gotten so advanced where they're actually creating a higher packaging uh of the yes. cardboard uh carrier. Yes. So that way it uh, minimizes the amount of light. Just to try to keep a little more of the light out. Yeah. So if anyone who's listening or watching and you think that a beer will skunk if it goes from cold to warm, cold to warm, that is false. That is not true. It's not true, but you also don't want to get it excessively warm. Like, sure. We don't want it. We don't want to leave it in the trunk of the car in the summer or anything right. wild I, like that. I understand. Yes. Uh, obviously yeah. that's common sense. But if you're worried, if it's, if it's on ice and, you know, the ice runs out and it's, you know, it, it, you know, gets room temperature for a day. Don't fret, put it back in the fridge, whatever you got. Yeah. Do. And in a lot of cases, I think too, it, it also depends on the quality of the beer you're dealing with in the first place. Like, sure. I mean, frankly, if you're dealing with, if you're dealing with a Bud Light, Throw it away. it's probably going to, yeah, it's going to lose something sooner than <laughs> like a, a 9% IPA from a craft brewery. If it goes from warm to cold and so on and so forth. It's a little, the the better the beer, a little more stable it's going to be until you get into obviously really fancy beers. You want to be cellar conditioning and all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, I was going to say like, you know, if I had a a cooler full of beer, maybe it's Miller Lite, maybe it's Coors Light, whatever it might be. uh, And it got warm. I I may be uh, in the past prone to, you know what, throw it away. It's, no, you don't want to do it's, that. It's well, I mean, I'm saying it's cheap enough, but now with uh, everything going on in the world, I hear that beer prices may be going up. Well, the prices of everything are going up. I mean, let's let's buddy. I the, the past two, it's I don't know if it's two or three days, but it's at least three, maybe two. Gas has gone up 20 cents. Yeah, I it's crazy. Um, I got sent a picture today. Somebody it was outside a gas station and saw it at four dollars and eight cents, right off 81. That's scary. Yeah, That's scary. I mean, it's the grocery a, store, I know, I know I added humans to my household and we do feed them, but you know I mean? My grocery bills, it's like insane. I went in the store last weekend. I said, I'll grab something for dinner tonight, a couple of snacks for later. And, uh, you know, the bill ends up being like 60 some dollars. Here comes our first run in of the night. The door's right, being there's one. Up. Let's go. Let's go. Toddler, hello. One. 
Oh, all right. They're not coming in. Okay. We've, we've had I'm always off. worried that it's my wife and it's an emergency, but I think she'd have yelled at me by now. So it was, if it was it's an emergency, we can, one. we can pause with, we can you know, pause there's no big deal. I we're not live. Coming. We're live no, we're to not, tape. We're, we're yeah, live we're live right now. We're live. We're here. We're, we're recording. We, we can edit. I don't, I don't edit. I don't edit them, but what I, I don't do, like I could, to edit either. I could pause and then, you know, yeah. you know, A, I'm not that talented to edit this myself and B, it just, uh, you know, this is unscripted. It's yeah. It's more fun now like. off the cuff. Whatever happens, happens. You yeah. Know? I don't want it to be polished. It wouldn't be as much no, fun. That way. No. I mean, who wants to polish podcasts? You know? No, no one. But, uh, yeah. So I, again, going back, I mean, you and I really never crossed paths outside of doing the beer show. Um, now granted I, as a salesman at the station, I, I did supply you with, uh, many, 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 uh, sponsorship opportunities, you some did. endorsements, so to speak. You, you put a significant amount of money in my pack. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, you know what though? Hey, Hey, I mean, a lot of the people, they demand the best. They want the number one in the, uh, the time slot. You were that guy. So somehow they got me. It wasn't just me. It was also you, yep. but you know, I don't know Neil Trauma. Uh, you know how your radio career got started. Uh, I know it's not your full time gig, but talk a little bit about yeah. Neil Trauma and how we got started at Rock One Hundred Seven. I mean, I was absolutely never in a million years supposed to be doing this right now. Let's be a hundred percent clear about that. You know, right off the bat, um, I was always into radio. I have a family connection in radio. My uncle Paul, who I'm very close with always was growing up, still am. He uh, was a radio professional. I mean, he did uh, a lot of work with the old uh, WSCR, which was a station in the market years ago. He's been all around. He's been at the station that's now the river. Um, and uh, so growing up, I always hung out with him. He was in radio. We always played radio in his room. He had all the equipment, you know, he had all the, uh, he had the, he had the podcast studio before people had podcast studios. Basically he's doing production like out of his room at, at and his, in his house. So I sort of grew up with that and I always like, you know, did it for fun. And I did college radio as a lot of us did. I don't know if you ever did. I was on uh, WRKC was my first real show at King's college um, for the one whole semester I went there. And then I transferred to university of Scranton, W and I uh, did a number of shows there. I had an alternative show. I had a sports talk show for, uh, for a year there at uh, the university station. And after college, you know, everybody kind of bouncing around. I graduated from college with a political science degree. And by the time I graduated, I realized I'm probably not going to use this thing. Like I'm not working at DC. I'm not moving to DC to work. I'm not working for the president. I'm not going to end up doing this. Like it's Northeast PA. If I get into politics, odds are, you know, I'm not that honest of a guy. 10, 15 years, I'm going to prison. I'm taking the bribes. If they're like, hey, Neil, we need this contract. Here's our house in Hilton Head for the week. Sure. You know, I'll be in jail. So I can't take a job like that. And my buddy saw a classified ad that Rock 107 was hiring part-time talent and said, hey, Neil, you should apply for this. And I said, well, that would be funny if I, if I got that job. I could kill that son of a bitch. You know that? Here we are. I got called in for the interview, got hired a week later as a part-timer. I was told, you know, part-time in radio, that was back in the day when we were, had people part-time staffing the entire weekends. Uh, they said, odds are you're not going to be here in a year. And I thought, you're right. Probably not even in six months, but it'll be fun while it lasts. And uh, they threw me on Sunday mornings at 630 in the morning. That was my gig. Uh, and eventually... I guess I must've had some discernible talent and they moved me to Saturday nights where for years I did the all request Saturday night show, which while in no way glamorous was without it out the most fun I ever had doing radio and just went from there. Uh, somehow I became the guy that would always answer the phone and they would say, you know, Hey, Neil, we need you to fill in for this, do this, help with this. Are you around tomorrow at 6 AM? Sure. Why not? And, uh, you know, it's still rolling. Here I am. Oh, you're a young man. You know, you had the time. That's what it was. That's what it was. And I'm very lucky. Uh, I do have a day job. Uh, my father owns an accounting practice here in Scranton. Uh, he has, you know, out of the goodness of his heart, employed me for my entire adult life there, uh, where I do some uh, boring, fairly monotone desk work by day. But, uh, you know, it always gave me the freedom to be able to go take a morning show here, take an afternoon show there, duck out early to do a remote 
you know, I was in a position where I didn't have to quite answer to the boss as much as some people do. So it's given me a lot of freedom throughout my life. Um, I feel like, do people just feel sorry for you and be like, oh, that's well, what it is. They you can have there, this there must job. Be, people must like me. I must be, I mustn't be that bad of a guy. I guess they just, the people are like, we'll just keep this Neil guy around. Yeah. He, he doesn't fun. cause any problems. He does his job and goes home. We just yeah. let him go. Yeah. But I mean, when you started in radio, radio was probably much different uh, then than it is now. Dude, we, uh, when I started, I mean, like I said, we had live talent on all day, every day. And I mean, it's certainly not peeling back the curtain to say here that we're, I think anybody who listens to the station knows that we're obviously not live 24 seven. I mean, there's nobody on overnight at any point, even during the week. I think, you know, that just by listening. And that's through any uh, station, all stations. Yeah, in the market. It, yeah. It's true with almost all radio, satellite radio, all of it. Um, you know, technology has given us the ability to record things in advance and, you know, play them as we need to. And we all do it. Um, it's given us the ability to schedule things ahead of time, uh, as need be. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, when you get into the world of, you know, needing to make money as a company as corporately, you, you do have to cut things back. And unfortunately, one of the things in radio that's really been cut back is a lot of the talent, the air talent. And I get it. You know, I, I can understand it from the perspective of the owners, but it is sort of sad to know that when I started, there was an air staff of, say, at least 10 to 12 people. There was a sales staff, of probably 15 or 20. And you go into the building now and there's like, you know, four or five of us at most on air. We all have other jobs at the station off air. And, you know, there's like, four or five sales guys roaming around trying, you know, their best to keep the lights on. And uh, everybody does a great job. Everybody works hard. Love the people I work with. But yeah, it is easy to look back on those days and like think it's hard to believe we've come here from there. Um, The question I have for you, and maybe the most important question of the evening is, how were you able to continue uh, moving forward um, when I decided to leave? What was that? (laughs) <laughs> I said, <laughs> "Are you serious? You didn't hear that?" No, you son oh, of a bitch. The phone's gonna go off. I'm such a professional. You son of a bitch. I was taking a sip of my beer. Go oh my god! I said the most important question that I may ask you this evening uh, about your time in radio is: How did you find the courage to continue on when I decided to leave the station? I heard the second part of that question. I you didn't hear the first bitch. part before. You son of a bitch. Before. But <laughs> I found the courage to go on. You know, it, it was hard. I was very disappointed to lose out on my, uh, you know, always reliable fill-in guest for my podcast. I will tell you that. That was difficult. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see We'll see how my endorsements go over the next couple of years. If they fall off the map completely, I'm going to need to bring you back in to get me signed up for this stuff. Part of me hopes they do. Part of, and, and And for no other reason... Outside the fact that I, I want, I want you to be like, man, that guy served a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did. You know, you 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 did. You did it right. You know, it's tough. I mean, it's you could say it's not an easy job. No, I mean, you're selling. You you're I mean, selling, I couldn't do it. It's it's funny people say that, and it's uh, you know, all sales for the most part is really a relationship uh, built. Um, I mean, that's a. I think it's probably eighty percent of it. And then the other 20 or maybe less knowing what you're doing. But um, <clears throat> I mean, you're selling air. You're selling something that people can't see and touch and feel like. I, I mean, a lot of ways you're selling potential. And yeah. I've been in on some of this because I try hard to like sell my show, especially the beer breakfast. We sure. like to get sponsors in on that. So I've been in on some of those meetings. And I mean, that's what it is. Like you can't go out and tell somebody like if you buy this ad, you know, it's not like you're selling them a car where you can guarantee they get a car at the end of the day. I'm yeah. going to sell you this ad. And I mean, I hope that 15% more people walk through the door on Saturday afternoon and buy your beer than they did before, but I can't guarantee it. You know, yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep doing my show and I can do a good job as I do your commercial. But I mean, you know, it's all about, you've got to be selling a good product to those people. When they come in the door, you've got to make them want to come back. You have to make them want to tell your friends a commercial can't magically do that. <laughs> You know, no matter how hard we try to tell them that it will, I mean, I can guarantee that at least more people will hear it than if it, only airs in your kitchen and not on our radio airwaves but you know beyond that it's a two-way street yeah that was a one of the big things it's like you know our job is to get the people there but you need to do the job after that yeah you know capturing them and 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 you know selling them something there or 
making sure that they come back in the future and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a a vehicle of, uh, you know, a a way to get people, you know, the word out there, but there's a lot of things that have to you know be done in the same time. And there's so many different, like, uh, you know, things that, you know, back in the day you could advertise a radio, the newspaper and billboards, and you you had a budget that you could be everywhere all at once. And now it's people are picking and choosing. And then, you know, the because, digital because back in the day there was only so many things for someone's like eyes and ears to be on. Yeah, four things you back know? in the day. Yeah, you had your, you know, there were only so many TV channels. There weren't, you know, a thousand channels on television to say nothing of YouTube and streaming services and all that. And uh, the internet. I mean, how many websites are there? I mean, how can you? How, I don't even know how as a website you could like even try target sales. Like, I get that you have obviously if it's a subject, you know, if they go along with the subject, but you know what I'm saying? There's just so many websites. It's like, yeah. it, it's, it's so hard. It's crazy. It, I, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't envy, you know, the radio where it is today. It's, uh, it's, I mean, the thing about radio is, and it's, it will always be free. It will always be, you know, we, we talked about live, but like live local, like, especially to the area that you live in. And, and there's something to be said about that. And, I, one of the coolest things is, is you know, and, you know, you all do such a great job. Prospector, you know, I had the pleasure of, like, you know, being able to have coffee with him in the morning. And, and you know, he uh, is this kind of crazy, zany guy. But, like, people love him. And I've seen you out of remotes. And Hoover is the the most dedicated worker that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, I believe strongly that if he was to ever leave that, those stations, um, that would be a very difficult day for Time Shamrock. Um, but you guys are there. You guys are in it. You love it. You're passionate about it. And, and uh, you know, the listeners love you guys. It is. And, you know, there is, there's a companionship there in a lot of ways. And that is what's cool about being local in one way, because like, I mean, Hoover, like Hoover literally is the guy down the street. I mean, he's Luzerne County board and born and bred. I mean, he literally does hang out at the VFW. You know, he is the guy that you might see like helping your buddy move down the street on a Sunday. Like he is that guy prospector is like that, you know, crazy friend that everybody has, you know, or like that crazy friend of a friend. Did you hear what he said? You know? And the fact that you are local, I mean, is cool. Like you do have that connection. You don't get that on serious. Yeah. You might have more channels with more genres of music when you're listening to us. I mean, I can talk about what's going on in Pittston at the Pittston parade, you know, at the Scranton St. Patrick's day parade. I can talk about, Hey, did you see that crazy thing that happened at the parade? You're not going to get that on serious. You're not going to get that listening to Spotify. You know, you're not going to get that local connection to what's going on. I can talk about, you know, what the beer specials are at this bar this weekend. I can talk about the new pizza that they've got here and talk about getting your pagosh and your church picnics during the summertime and, you know, all that stuff. You you don't get that. You don't get that anywhere else. Yeah. No, I I love my time in radio. Um, You know, I I definitely miss uh, being a part of that for sure. Yeah. Um, There's a... And I, and I think people who appreciate radio get that too. Um, that's why they, they love it. Um, but yeah, you're definitely competing for with a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and, platforms. And you know, what's crazy too. And it, with something that I think is a reason why my show has generally had decent ratings. I mean, I like to think that I play some part in it. I mean, I must be at least halfway decent at what I do, but for a lot of people, you know, just having a voice in the room, like you don't realize this. There's a lot of people who work alone. <laughs> like dudes that do construction alone. They work in a garage alone. They're in their car all day alone working. And, you know, you could throw your iPod on or whatever you throw on now on your phone, your Spotify, or you throw something on and listen to music, which is cool. But when you're listening to local radio, you like feel like, I think for there's a lot of people that I'm the guy they work with. You know, Mm -hmm. some people work in an office, they go to the water cooler, they go to the coffee pot and they talk to somebody about the Yankees game last night. Well, for other people that are alone, eight hours a day working, that's me, Mm -hmm. you know, it's prospector, it's Hoover, it's us, you know, for a lot of people. And, And I think sadly that was a little bit lost when we lost the ability to have talent on at night. Cause that really was a thing for people that worked overnight. Like if you work overnights by yourself, 
Think of how lonely that is. <laughs> but, you know, for, for a lot of people, that's what we are. We're their coworkers. Yeah. You know, people that work boring jobs. We, they don't actually get to have the conversation. But if you're good at what we do, you kind of feel like you're having a conversation. And it's nice for it to be with, like, your buddy, you know, Hoover from down the VFW or, you know, Neil that you met at the bar last weekend than it is to be, you know, somebody that's in a studio in New York City on Sirius. Yeah, and you have no connection with other than, you know, that was the last song. Here comes the next song. And I think that's what we try to do in local radio is to be that person. Yeah, I mean, and you guys do a great job. And I think a lot of the stations here and in, in NEPA do a great job. Um, you know, it, it's. You know, it's always a competitive landscape, right? But. Is it in this in the same sense, of course, you know, Rock 107 wants to be number one, you know, females. 2554 because according to the data they they say that th- those that segment of the market is the one with the buying power the ones that make all the decisions all that kind of stuff but in the same sense it's like you know rock 107 is rock 107 krz is krz the top 40 station like yeah you all have your places in the market of course from a business standpoint you want to be number one you want to get the ratings you want to get the the uh national advertisers to to buy into the station and spend more money, yada, yada, yada. But I mean, you guys all do such a great job, um, you know, for your perspective stations. And do you see yourselves as like, I mean, I feel like back in the day and maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. I think back in the day, it was more cutthroat. It was more competitive as opposed to now where, you know, if you saw Lissa from KRZ or if you saw a jump in Jeff Walker, or you saw, you know, whoever it might be like, you might be more inclined to be like, Hey man, what's going on? Or how you doing? What's, what, what's shaking? Like, yeah. I mean, I think part of that is, I think we've kind of all got to take the, the perspective that like, we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if I, if I hurt you, I'm hurting radio in general. And in the end of the day, that hurts me. I mean, there certainly is still competition. If there's a, if there's a concert coming to town and for whatever reason, you know, the promoter's only going to give tickets to one station. Sure. I want to compete with, 97 X to be the station that gets to give away the tickets because people will listen to get their tickets. But right. yeah, I mean, it, it's a fraternity. And I mean, people go from station to station, you know, a lot of my, my best friend in radio left rock 107 to, to go work for another radio station. So, you know, it, it just, it's just how it goes. And, you know, we're all from, we all work in the same industry. We're all friends. It's like, it's like, imagine you're uh, like, imagine like a baseball team, right? Like, sure. You're in competition when you're on the field, but you know, what happens half the time when the guy's on first base, he says hi to his buddy that plays first base on the other team. Like, it's not like, yeah, it's not like, it doesn't have to be like, uh, it doesn't have to be an off the, off the field hatred. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you're, you're, so we're all I, first. I think as I, as I got older and as I, you know, you know, I spent time with uh, the weekender, um, I spent time in radio, um, I've been out of radio for a year now and I'm doing this whole podcasting thing and all that kind of stuff. Like, but when I first started my career, like, you know, I grew up watching Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan wanted to bury his competition. Right. And when I started, I was working with the weekender and we had, there, there was a, you know, a time shamrock owned product. It was uh, the electric city or diamond city. And in my mind, I wanted to bury them. Like, I was just like, no, you're the competitor. Like I want you gone. Or the number one in arts and entertainment magazine or newspaper, whatever you want to call it, like get out of here and we, we will bury you. And eventually they did go away. Um, but I think it is, and maybe that was just being young. Maybe it was just being naive. Maybe it was uh, a plethora of things. I don't know. But as I got older and even, you know, working in the local music scene and, and bands were the same way. They, they always wanted to, they wanted to be on the show. They wanted, they thought their band was the best that they should, you know, be playing at X, Y, and Z. And now I think in 2022, there's a lot more, you know, working together. Um, and I, and I don't know if that's, I don't know what that might be. I don't know if it's just like, we got soft or if we realize we're stronger together or I don't know what it really is. I, I don't, it, it's like, it's weird, but it's good. I don't know. I mean, I have a couple of things going through my head as you say that. Um, first one is as far as that idea of like being in competition with the other radio stations or with the other people in your field, 
I actually think of my grandfather and something he used to say. My grandfather was a local politician here in Scranton. If you happen to have any listeners in like the over 70 age group, they would know the name Neil Trama. Uh, he was a city councilman in the city of Scranton, did a lot of stuff politically, ran for Congress. And uh, back in those days, the Scranton City Council meetings were heavily covered on local news. They would show clips of it. And it was always like the he would say it was always the two minute clip where him and he was a Democrat and him and the Republican guy were, were yelling at each other, like waving their papers about something. So the people watched this and they thought, man, these guys hate each other. <laughs> then they'd be out in downtown Scranton and they see them, you know, going all having lunch together laughing at the table and they'd say i saw you on the news don't you guys hate each other it's like no you know we don't right like what's the expression like it stops at the water's edge right right like sure we're, we're not we're not enemies we're just opposition and that's that's really what it is yeah you know i mean of course i want to win the ratings against the other station because it might mean more money in my pocket and it might mean you know more opportunities for my station but at the end of the day i don't hate anybody that works for another radio station i don't want to see bad things happen to them right sure, sure. and i think here in 2022 i think in a lot of ways our lives have become our lives have become all encompassing it gets a lot harder now i feel like to be popco or to be neil trama the on-air talent and separate that from the off air mm-hmm. right like do you think of that like in a lot of ways that yeah makes sense absolutely to you? like you know it, it would be really easy you know to to just like have an on you know an on-air character that hates that other guy from that other radio station but you know like i said about my grandfather then when the microphone's off you're you know out having having a a, a sandwich together we're like now because of twitter and everybody is constantly you're you're tick tocking your social media like right. it's a 20 it becomes a 24 7 thing you know you're no longer a character you're no longer a personality on a show you're just you and you know everything you do is somehow all encompassing so you know if you're going to be friends with a guy that works for another station you're just going to be friends with that guy that's how it is well it's funny you say that too because a lot of the the djs i think and if i'm wrong please correct me but you know <clears throat> I don't want to give this away if people don't know this already, but like the DJ names aren't people's real names, but they either created those as a character or because they didn't want, you know, listeners to come find them. <laughs> yeah. Cause back in the day it was kind of like they were, you guys were elusive. Like, you know, there yeah. was no social media. There was no access to people outside of, of listening to them on the air, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, (laughs) that's something that I have, uh, I do feel strongly about. I do wish, I wish I had a little more separation, you know, in that way. I mean, but I am Neil Trama on my birth certificate and I'm Neil Trama on Rock 107. So that just is how it is. But, uh, yeah, I I get what you're saying. And sometimes it would be nice to have a little bit of separation. Yeah. uh, I remember when I, when I started the show on 92.1, uh, the PD at the time, he's like, all right, you got to come up with a name. And I'm like, and when I started, I was like 36, maybe, or 35 years old, 35. And um, I was like, hey, what am I going to call myself? Like, striker? Like, like what? Like, what did like, uh, that, I'm, I am who I am. Froggy back in the day, it was like Doc Hopper. And <laughs> I, I am who I am. Like, I'm just like, I'm this guy. Like, I'm like this. I, I would not be able to comfortably say like, I'm a uh, lightning bolt or whatever. The, you know, it's weird. Right. So I was like, I was happy that I was able to be called pop go, but also it was in a time where no one was trying to find me. Yeah. Uh, you know, pop I go very much works for you. You are very much a pop go. I hope I so. That's my last. Well, that's that's. And then yeah. I remember the guy said he's like, well, "What do people call you in high school?" And I'm like, "Popco." Like there was three Johns yeah. <laughs> growing up, and like so from like junior high on, none of us were called John. We were called by our last names because that was easier to, you know, differentiate each other. But uh, it's just it's just funny how radio is really you know, and it's and it's it's been able to continue on. But I mean, I don't know how many how far back you go as far as the stories like radio and the things you guys did back in the day, like is stuff that you could never do now. Yeah. I feel like I hit it at the tail end of the really cool period. And I maybe got to experience like a year or two of it before, like things started to turn more into where we are today. 
Yeah. If that makes sense. Like I know all the stories, but I unfortunately didn't experience most of them. But yeah, I mean, I've heard it all. Like, I mean, from listeners sending food when you were working like weekend overnights, like I've heard so many people would just send you food. Like they would just, they'd call a pizza place and say, Hey, send, send pizza to the guy working at rock 107. That would happen. Girls showing up after the show. That would very much happen. Never happened to me. Like but rock it would stars. Happen. Yeah, Rock yeah, you, know, you kind of, kind of were, and, and that's part of the reason I look back with such nostalgia on that Saturday Night Show. Like at the time, like there was a part of me that hated it because I was like twenty five, and now my Saturday nights, like I had to work, which which sucked. But they were hilarious. Like seventy five percent of the callers were drunk, so of course, like all the calls were ridiculous, uh, deciding what you were going to put on the air or not. Just having the freedom to do that because hey peel back the curtain a little more for you guys. There is a guy that kind of dictates what we play and don't play on the station, you know, <laughs> and you know, just so you know, it's not a hundred percent my decision, what songs play and when, uh, you know, all there there's, they do research now there's surveys. Yeah, believe it or not, the listeners are actually the ones who dictate what this there play- is. There is, <laughs> they, are. they are, there, there's, there is very much a, a silent majority. They don't know that, but they are. Yeah. I mean, if you are one of the people out there that thinks, God, I hate that rock 107 plays those same songs over and over again. I want to hear this deep track and that deep track and this entire album by this band that nobody's ever heard of. Believe me when I tell you, you are in the minority, no matter what your friends at work or the bar say you are in the minority on that. Uh, people by all the research we do, they want to hear the same damn songs over and over again. So that is not entirely my fault or, or prospector's fault or anybody's fault, uh, but your own. So you think about them, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't even know what I, I don't even know what I was saying before that, but, but no, the, the ability to have the freedom to do like the all request show well, was just, was just really cool about it. And you know what I would give to just go back for what to do one of those shows again, just like one time. I'll tell you, it would be, it would be so much fun. Yeah. Times are a change. And I just saw, uh, <clears throat> uh, fish boy and KRZ did they, their last Saturday night's dance party at the Man, woodlands. Think about that. Think about the heritage of that. It, that's, I think that's, that's been that's like 20, 25 years. I think it's been, yeah. you know, Friday night dance party was a Friday or Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night. Oldies, sorry. Right? I think it's Saturday, it Saturday night oldies. I, I thought know, it was, I thought it was Saturday. I could be wrong. Be, but you know, wrong. it really is. It's, it, it is something else. And what was really cool actually, and you were still at the station for this. I loved this. And I think everyone else hated it because they're all a little more jaded than me. Um, how responsible were you for those remotes? We did split rock. Remember those? Uh, well, I wasn't, I, I had no involvement. You had nothing in to that. do with that. I, I think that was, uh, well, I'm going to tell you a buddy, me um, Those were the most fun I had doing a live event for the station in years because they basically hired us to DJ at the bar for the night. I don't know if you mm-hmm. even know that. Kind of. Like I brought my like DJ equipment and my instructions were you're Neil from Rock 107. Play whatever you want for us for the next two hours. <laughs> it was so much fun to have the freedom to do that and like to just be open to like, you know, somebody come up and ask you what to play. And because I do little side hustle, little plug here, I do some wedding DJing on the side. So, uh, you and entertainment, you could search me out there where I, where I can play whatever I want within the parameters of what the bride and groom want to hear, but to totally have the gloves off at a bar for the night and just be told, play what you want to make people happy. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That may have like taken you back a little bit to the, the good old it days. Did. Yeah, it did. That's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's pretty wild and pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, those Saturday night shows were unbelievable. And I feel like we could fill up the rest of the time on this show, just like telling ridiculous radio stories from, from live events and stuff that happened in micro. How many times were you ever called by HR and yelled at? Never. Uh, Never I was drug, I was drug tested said. by HR several times. Were you- <laughs> <laughs> I was drug. I was tested. Passed them all. all yeah, all of them. I, I was tested three times in the course of uh, eight or nine months. Beautiful. I uh, I got drug tested. Somebody didn't like you. <laughs> hey, somebody drug- ran into you at the V spot. It's I got like, tested. I got tested when I came back to the station. That was like January, February of 2015. Okay. I got a random. A random drug test, which I I thought that I thought that was in place 
you know, if I was driving uh, my yeah. car as a salesman or driving the company vehicle and I got into an accident, they could send me for a drug test to, you know, clear the, you know, any possibility of, you know, sure. under the, whatever it might yeah. be. But no, random drug test. I got a call from Steve Borneman. He said, John, uh, <laughs> I was on the road. I think I was like maybe coming back from a sales call. He's like, John, I need you to, uh, uh, provide us a urine sample within the next 24 hours. And I remember just being so pissed. I was like, are you, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, he's like, I, I was like, I'm not even gonna wait 24 hours. I mean, I'm going right now. I went to the, the, the urgent care. I got my, my test or whatever. And I, I went back and I took the paper that showed I passed. I took it to HR, Bill Nish. I'm like, here you go. Here's your test, you know? And then I actually got in a car accident while at work in September of that year. So within like nine months, I got drug tested three times. <laughs> I was, uh, it was a parade day once, uh, back in the day. I don't even think they do this anymore. Um, we used to go all out for the Scranton St. Patrick's day parade, right? Like we have our floats and behind our building, they would have like a big like party and a big like cookout for all the employees that took part. And, uh, <clears throat> there was a year in my younger days where I, uh, I may have imbibed a little bit too much parade, uh, me and guilty, uh, guilty. me and, uh, another employee, uh, you know, I'm going to call him out because he doesn't work there anymore. Dave Dorenzo. Oh. We, uh, we may have taken a walk to the Banshee prior to the parade stepping off and we may have had car bombs and that's plural. And, uh, then we, you know, we did the parade thing. I marched along the parade route. Somehow I, I made it from the beginning to the end. Went to the party afterwards and got into the cooler of Blue Moons, which I decided would be a good idea to smash together and pour into my mouth Stone Cold Steve Austin style uh, in front of everyone, including the director of HR, who who had a phone call with me, Mr. Nish, on Monday morning to tell me that the company was very concerned with my drinking problem and uh, thought I should perhaps seek help. And, uh, you That's know, little funny. did he know that years later, my, my drinking problem would, would land me a long running feature <laughs> <laughs> on the air. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's my one and only amazing one and only running with HR, uh, was that one incident. I've avoided the company parade day events uh, ever since just out of safety. I don't even know if they still have them. So, so don't go trying to find us on a parade day morning in downtown Scran. I don't think the party even happens anymore, but, uh, yeah, I mean, those are the I, days I feel like I got into like media um kind of the, the tail end it was 2005 when i started the weekend or kind of the tail end of like when the like the nuts stuff like was like coming to an end and i think I mean, even at that point it wasn't like as crazy as it was 10 years prior to that 20 years prior to that it just was a. Uh, I mean those those parades were nuts i mean and you know what i think though too like honestly they might still be crazy like they were but like you're saying, you know, we got the cell phones now. Everyone's got a camera in their pocket. You yeah. get caught doing something stupid, you're going to be on Facebook. You're going to be yeah. called down to HR. You're going to be I mean, look, possibly like, fired. I, mean, I never did anything dangerous. No, but you, know, you have like, to. You don't have you, you could, you know, I mean, if you're pissing on the side of a building, it's not dangerous, but it's yeah. not. It's not a. It's not something you want to get caught doing. Yeah, the, I, I never. I never quite did that either. Although I think I did once eat a raw hamburger at one of those cookouts. That's just going to hurt you. That's not going to hurt yeah, anybody. It's not going to hurt anybody else. No. I uh, I uh, ruined a birthday bash once. Did you? Yeah. I uh, I uh, interrupted Mountain Set and your Mountain headlined the birthday bash. Were you, were you at the station for that one? I don't think so. So there was a uh, there was a long running tradition that the overnight guy always introduced the midnight band at the birthday bash. So if you've ever been to our birthday bash, you know that there's always a number of local acts that play, and then generally around nine thirty or ten o'clock, that's when the big feature national band hits the stage and they do their hour and a half or two hour set, and then at midnight the party goes on until two o'clock when they have to stop selling liquor. So there's always another local band that plays after the headliner. And they hit the stage at midnight. And it was always the tradition that the overnight guy introduced the midnight band. So I'm at the bash where Mountain played. And uh, we have a, a little private room for the staff that's always, you know, stocked with free alcohol. So I'm trashed by the end of Mountain's set. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. I was not in a good state. But I was the overnight guy at the time. So it was my job to introduce the band that was going to take the stage after Mountain. 
And at the bash, if you've been there or not, the way we set up the grand ballroom at the Woodlands is there's a main stage on one end of the room. And then all the way on the other end, there's another stage and the bands alternate. So they have time to set up their equipment. So Mountain is playing on the main stage on one end and I'm introducing the next band on the stage on the other end. And uh, Mountain stopped. They finished their set. They went to their little, you know, backstage area in preparation for an encore. Well, I'm on stage at the other end and the band that was set to play at midnight, I think also wasn't clued in on Mountain's set list. So their lead singer began yelling at me to get up there and introduce us because Mountain stopped playing. And I was not quite, you know, in a state of mind where I knew exactly what was happening. And I was like, well, he's yelling at me to announce them. So I just hit the microphone and I said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mountain. Here's these guys. I don't even remember who the other band was, but I introduced them. Presumably I knew their name that night. And as far as I know, Mountain never (laughs) took the stage for their encore. And I am 100% the reason for that. <laughs> All right, not 100%. Well, I think well, some of the blame falls on that other guy that told me to do my introduction. Well done. But, yeah. Well done. So it, it is what it is. So, sorry, Mountain fans of Northeast Bay. And now Leslie West is dead, so they're never going to be back. And I'm never going to get to redeem myself for that. I hope you're happy. Yeah, how, it's all my how dare you. Yeah, I mean, it was terrible. I mean, not only was it a worldwide pandemic, but I mean there were so many cool things happening in 2020. I feel like, you know, for me professionally, I was already set in January to have like a record year. Personally, you know, rock 107 was celebrating their 40th yeah, anniversary. Such a huge deal. Such a, you know, I mean, we, we had t-shirts like, I don't I think it was like 2000 t-shirts, 40th anniversary printed on them. Fuel, ready to go. Fuel was all set up to play that birthday. Fuel bash. set. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be cool. And, uh, I mean, and that, we had that big Alice Cooper concert was planned, which they are actually making up, and it's finally happening now in a couple of weeks. But um, it was all going to be a big thing for Rock 107. Yeah, I mean, how, like, how how what were you? What were your thoughts? And you know, when that all kind of came crashing down, yeah, I, be... I don't know how entertainment survived. First of all, but I mean, it was it was such a whirlwind. I was with my wife and our daughter who was very little at the time. And we, we have a tradition in the springtime ever since we bought our house in the springtime, we always go to Philly to eat to Ikea and we end up like redoing a room or buying this or that. And we were on that trip in early March of 2020. We were down at Ikea in Philadelphia. We bought some stuff for our house. We went to a Trader Joe's because we always load up on Trader Joe's goods whenever we're in a city that has one. And I'll always remember the stock one at Trader Joe's was apologizing to us that they were out of certain things because he said people were stockpiling them because of this pandemic that was happening and they were afraid that they weren't going to be able to get things and i remember laughing at him and saying god people are nuts this is gonna people are gonna forget about this in two weeks and then a week later was when the ncaa tournament got canceled and we all got called into that meeting at the station to get told we were going remote and i'll never forget you're a huge part of that if you remember the day they sent us home, remember me and you rolled into the studio and we recorded like four beer breakfast shows together. <laughs> Cause I was like, I gotta have content on the air. So me and you crushed like three six packs or something. And we're just banging out shows right before we got sent home for the pandemic. And I never could imagine. Like, I remember our, our boss telling us in that meeting, like, look, it, it's going to be tough for a couple of weeks, maybe a month after that, it's going to take for us to all get back on our feet. And then we're all going to look back on this and say, like, you know, what a crazy time it was, but we survived. Yeah. And, like, we're still here, and it still isn't over. Yeah. It's been two years, and it's still – and there's no end in sight. I mean, no, there it, is. Obviously, we're much better off now than we were then. But, like, is this thing well, ever going to be fully gone away? Probably not. Yeah, well, we know more. We know how to treat yeah. more. We, um, Which I guess is, you know, half the battle. It's just – um. What what a game changer! It is crazy. You know, like, I mean, how did how how do, what were you thinking? Like, I mean, you have a little child at home, wife at home. You know, works telling you to go home, work from home. Like, what's going through your head? I mean, obviously, you know, everybody was, you know, and there's that part of you that's scared. There's also the part of me that just can't help but like laugh because it just seems so it seems so impossible, right. so impossibly ridiculous that this could even happen. And then like the news 
it just made it worse because you have the people that were overreacting and the people that were underreacting. And there was, there was no part of it that wasn't prime material as an entertainer. Right. I mean, from, from people stockpiling toilet paper so that you can't get toilet paper in the store to like the crazy reactions of people in the government that just did ridiculous things on both sides of the aisle. Like Mm -hmm. it is so easy to make fun of everybody. And, uh, you know, there's always a part of me that wants to make a joke about something. So I, I always try to have like, I try to have that, like, you know, silver lining perspective or like that sort of, that sort of way to, to laugh at things. So I always look at the humor in it. And I mean, there's, there's, there, there was some humor there, but it was like, in hindsight, I don't know how we survived it, but at the time, I just feel like we were living week to week, mm-hmm. you know, and it was in a lot of ways, like, you know, I can't believe this is happening right now. Like, I don't know how we're going to get to next week. You know, what's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, in two weeks, this should be over in a month. This should be over in six months. This should be over. And then you hit that point where it's like, this isn't going to be over in a year. We're never yeah. going to get out of this. Yeah. It's like, we're all like for every step forward, there were three steps back and it was just wild. I'll tell I'll tell you what. And you don't have to comment on this if you don't want to, but I feel, and I, I was, I was so impressed with how the leadership at Time Shamrock handled the situation because, well, I don't work there anymore, so I don't need to be like worried about what I say. Um, but of course I don't want to burn bridges either. Don't get me but, in trouble. No, 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 I, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want you to comment, but, um, for them to say, hey, like employees work from home. And I think we worked from home for two and a half, three months. And it's not ideal. I mean, they have a business to run, they have sales yeah. to make. They have, I mean, like that that year we were at our March budget, I think the fifth day of March. We were ready. We, we were like that year, not it was like for the station as a whole or the stations, that was going to be a record year. And, you know, at budget March 5th or whatever it was, and then come March 13th or whatever date it was, you know, it's completely backwards. But I was just impressed because, I mean, there's, you know, we work for a company that, you know, if there's a foot or a foot and a half of snow outside, it's like you're expected to be at work. And at the end of the, end of the day, I'll say it out loud. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they kind of, they were there. They, they said, hey, like our employee safety is our number one priority work from home and i don't know how it was for you but like i was thankful for two reasons i was scared i didn't know what was going on but i also had a, a young child at home yeah i didn't know how it was going to affect you know him um i would just i was genuinely and thoroughly impressed with how the company and the leadership there handled the pandemic um you know a, a lot of the sales reps at least in radio work uh on a hundred percent commission and you know, if there are no sales, you don't, you make no money and your, your, your income is based on sales. And at the time, everyone was like, cancel my ad, cancel my ad, cancel my ad. They made sure that they, they took care of their, um, their salespeople. Sure. Um, they didn't lay off any unneeded, uh, yeah. people throughout the building, throughout the entire company. Like I was just very impressed with how they handled it. And I I will say this about the company for sure there. I don't know if there was a decision they made during the pandemic that at the time I didn't question in some way, but looking back on it, they literally did everything right. Yeah. Like from a, from a safety perspective, from when they sent us home to when they brought us back to what the, the procedures were when we were brought back um, and how we did things. I'll say that. And, and I will say another thing, like you said about people canceling their ads and, you know, I mean, if, when you're running a business and like your income goes down to almost nothing, of course, advertising is going to be the first thing you cut when you have to make sure to keep the lights on and, you know, keep product in stock. Of course they are. I don't blame them. And, you know, despite losing all that income, like I will say that I will always be thankful for the fact that I'm even still here. Cause I mean, like, let's be honest if they needed to cut somebody could have very easily been me. And, you know, I don't know if at some point somebody went to bat to say like, you know, let's keep him on the air. And especially like we most certainly, the world most certainly did not need a beer breakfast show during the pandemic. And the fact that they continued to pay me every week to sit in my house and drink a six pack of beer and talk about it on the radio, I will never, you know, 
forget that the fact I'm very thankful that that happened and it really yeah. helped my family and it helped keep us going. And, you know, I know we, we had some discussions, you know, amongst ourselves about your situation with sales, which I know was really tough on you, but you know, the fact that they kept everybody around and they kept going and, you know, we were working for them and we were certainly helping the company, you know, keep it going too, but they, they did take care of us and time Shamrock definitely did a great job. And I will say that and I've never yeah. really thought about it until we're talking about it now, but, they really did a great job. Yeah, I mean that was just one thing. I and I that's why I actually you know felt a little guilty leaving a year after. Well, started in twenty twenty. I think I left in tw- January of twenty twenty one. I almost felt guilty because I was like, well, it really took care of us. But um, you know, I just didn't know how the sales landscape was going to be, and I literally could not make a penny less than what I was making. Yeah, and. I was just like, I got an opportunity and I had to take it. And uh, I'm glad I did. There's a lot of great things that happened, um, you know, with my current job that, yeah, you know, were, were good. Um, but yeah, I just, and I don't think I, I don't know if I ever like, I, I, I did email, uh, uh, what's his name? I forget their names, but. Oh, like, oh, what's his name? Yeah. But I did email leadership and I, I remember saying like, you know, thank you for doing what you did. I know it could not have been an easy situation for you guys to be in. Um, but I just wanted to, to say it was Don, Don, what, what the hell is his yeah. last name? Don, don't put me on the spot like that. Don and, and well, Jim Lewandowski, I think is still there. Um, and Don, Don, what's God, his name? Damn it. Don, Farley. Don Farley. Thank you. Farley. But yeah. yeah. God, I got that right. I got to hope I did. <laughs> I don't think Don's listening, though, to be honest. But if and you Don, are Don, and if you are Don, thanks. I Don's, hope that's your name. Don's not there anymore, so it doesn't matter. But uh, I still don't want to be mean to be rude to the guy, get his name wrong. I promise you. I will bet you every yeah. dollar in my bank account. Sure, right. I'm not going to listen to this. Yeah. Come on. Maybe we'll send it to him. Hey, I know we're, we're close to hitting our time cue. Yeah. So I know that, you know, we'll, we'll wrap I it hope up. we get to do this again. I hope we get to drink more beers. Maybe we should do like a, we should do like a pseudo beer breakfast popco project sometime where like we actually like, sample the beers instead of just like getting mildly buzzed while we record yeah i'm well what are you drinking by the way did you well, tell I'm having, us i'm having the mop water you're onto the mop water and, now and what what's disappointing is like this takes me back to november yeah and and the cold the cooler weather and just uh well there, there's i'm sure there's a few cold days ahead of us here I, well i'm not in the mood right now for this. yeah you but. want it to be over i think it's like, it's like the COVID of beers right now. Like yeah. I want it to be over. Yeah. But uh, it, it was that is that in the in the garage for me? Did I it have is. to get mop water? I it don't is. Remember. I think yeah, there I was two two was. sixes of IPA yeah. mop water. I don't remember. I, I was pretty I was pretty drunk when you texted me and said, "Hey, I'm at Kate May. What do you want?" And I just like Venmo you cash and said, "Hey, bring me bring me stuff home." Oh, and I have cash and I have your beer too. So yeah, uh, you do. So what you probably should do if you're sick of looking at it is like every week. Like send me a video of you cracking one of my beers open and drinking it. No, and then I'll, be like, I'll, I'll be running down there to get them. I won't do that. But hey, well, the beer breakfast, rock107.com. Uh, that's where all the archives are, including all the shows with our buddy Popco right here. And we've had a lot of fun on those shows. Those pre-COVID shows were actually really funny. I I, I liked those shows. They were so funny. There's, like we just banged out like all these shows in a couple hours. There's one COVID show that was yeah, like, oh yeah. When I when I forgot that we were sampling and I just dumped it in the, the, the yeah, full glass. This, this dude took down three like heavy duty high octane IPAs in like 25 minutes. So yeah. that one that that's that's a good one to find. In fact, you know, I think the next time I need a next time a guest cancels and I need a rerun, I'm putting that one on just so we could just so we could spotlight it one more time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are all in the archives at rock107.com. New shows every weekend. Uh, at least we try to do that. I've had like three shows this year canceled because of either weather when I was supposed to record or uh, I had a guy end up in the hospital. It's been, it's been oh, kind of crazy. I had people with COVID. It's been crazy. But, uh, you know, we, we try to bump these out every Saturday. And if we don't, I, I try to at least do some kind of a fun, fun look back. At, at least it's good that I've been doing this long enough that I have an archive of shows to dive into sure. for reruns for the radio show. But all the podcasts are there. ESPN Radio every Saturday morning at 9 if you are up and listen. And uh, there are people that make that a big part of their Saturday morning, which who I definitely appreciate. And, uh, you know, drink some, drink some IPAs, drink local if you could. So many great beers out there to try. If you haven't yet. I can't believe how little we actually talked about beer on the show. 
<laughs> There's always well, another. If, show. if you haven't yet, reach out to Back Mountain Brew. Yeah, yes, I, they're on my list. Good. Yeah, uh, I work with the owners there now. Uh, great people. Beers are good. But uh, and then also catch Neil middays on Rock 107. Yeah, that's important too. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Saturday on Rock 107 Northeast PA's ES or not ES. <laughs> me, how many beers have I had? Northeast PA's home of classic rock. All right. You've probably said that, what? How many times, times have I said day? that and I screwed it up here? <laughs> Edit that out. Get no. those editing skills. No, to I told work. you. We're, we're, Get those we're editing there. skills to work. And uh, hey, you you also search me out too. I uh, have a uh, podcast called Chronology that uh, I, right now we're on hiatus, but we're coming back very soon where we are going to review my partner, Dave, and I review every episode of WWE's Monday Night Raw that has ever aired. So far, we've made it to like May of 1993, which means we've done three months out of a uh, 35 or so year run of shows. So uh, <laughs> we have a long way to go. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, check that out. Is, what was it, was it called? Chronology? chronology. Chronology. It's like chronology, so. but we put raw. In raw. Right, right, yeah. right. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So well, Neil, <laughs> and you know, someday we'll do someday. We're going to get through all 30 years of these shows. But right now we've got through like a month and a half. Well, you're very busy. You have two children. Yeah, I, you're did, I, I had a child. He He's had got, some kind no, of crazy injury on a bike. I don't you know. Have, you, 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 you had no children. Your wife had those children. That's true. My my part was very minimal and it was over quickly. It was very funny, quickly. too. I, I mean, it, I we've known each other for seven years, but you've known my family for I don't know how long. That's true. Your cousin was the uh, maid of honor in, in my wedding. <laughs> That's right, crazy. Yeah. Uh, Jen, Jen? Yeah, Jen. Your Jen was Jen. your wife's maid of honor. Yes. She is one of my wife's best friends, possibly her very best friend for many, so, many years. So crazy. It is. So crazy. What a small world. It is but, a small world. Maybe someday we will, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll get all the, all the, all the families on together. I don't know. Yeah, why, why not? Why not? You're, you're well, ready for this journey of the second kid. Good luck. Yeah, I'm terrified. What is the favorite right now? Your son's about a year or two older than my daughter, right? He just turned four in December. Yeah, so he's he's got like a year and a half. What's the favorites right now? Because we are heavily into Bluey here and Paw Patrol. Oh, Paw Patrol's big. Um, uh, PJ Masks. PJ Masks, yeah. She went through a big PJ Masks phase. It's kind of waned, but every once in a while that we're back into PJ Masks. In Mickey Mouse Clubhouse... And Minnie's bow tunes, they're kind yeah. of around. Yeah. We're, we're going I'm sure to Disney. He's not into that. We're going to Disney next month. So uh, we're trying to like push some of oh. the Disney stuff on them. Well, dude, this is a whole off air conversation and maybe even a podcast when you get home. <laughs> because for everybody that doesn't know that, Disney is my other passion project besides beer and professional wrestling. Um, I, uh, for many years was a blogger at Touring Plans, which is a huge uh, Disney fan uh, site. And they, they do a lot of, uh, planning things for people that are planning trips like touring plans that they, they use computer technology to tell you what rides to ride when and uh, they've got a lot of cool stuff there so i will plug them even though i don't officially work for them anymore although i kind of do and that's maybe a story for another time but yeah if you're into di- we could do a whole disney world podcast sometime all right so next we'll time talk about next that time on the popco project disney right. disney uh disney with neil trauma yeah but, yeah dude it's uh he's um is he's an absolute joy. He's such a good kid. We actually just yep. bought a um he, he likes watching YouTube. So he he like found um people playing Mario Party. Yeah. I and hear that's a thing. We've avoided that. So we actually got a Nintendo Switch last weekend. Um what a fortune. Um the games, <laughs> the games are like 60 bucks a game. I'm like, I don't remember this stuff being this fucking expensive. And uh so we have one game. Can we cur- I didn't realize we could curse on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, this is not for the children. Oh, fuck. I could have been cursing <laughs> this whole time. You know, you know how you know how I spent my whole career avoiding accidentally saying fuck on the microphone. And yeah, I could have done it tonight. Get, get it all out now. You, now you gotta have me on again. But uh yeah, I mean, uh so yeah, we got uh Nintendo Switch one game only right now, um, which is uh Mario Kart. Uh yeah. so we're having, we're having fun as a family playing Mario Kart uh, at night. Um but yeah, I mean, kids are a joy, a blessing. Um, I'm happy to be having a second one, especially after all the uh, the heartbreak that my wife and I have experienced over the last two and a half years or two years, whatever it's been. But um, yeah, I'm I'm happy for you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wish I would have done the whole kid thing sooner. Um, and it's there was no like reason behind it. It was just life. Um, life 
you know, my wife was in school for a thousand years because she's smart and I guess wanted to put herself, well, she's smart, um, textbook and, and things like that. Not smart going to school for nine years. Um, cause that's a lot of debt, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It happened when it happened. And, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, we have, what we have, but what a, what a, what a fun ride. Yeah, absolutely. So. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, buddy. It's been a buddy, blast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm glad we finally did it. You finally. Know where to, you know where to find me. Now what am I going to make fun of you about? What am I going to bust you about now? I have your beer, so. Yeah, you be, do. Be, I gotta be careful. Get it. Be this careful. weekend, no doubt. No doubt about it. Whenever you're ready. I'll even put it outside for you, or I'll meet you halfway <laughs> somewhere. I don't care. Right. I want it out of my garage. I want it out of my hands. I don't want to feel the guilt that I feel anymore. Well, hey, let's end this like we always do my podcast. Let's All right, do a, let's do a, it. Goodbye. Let's, let's here's to a long life and a merry one, a quick death and an easy one, a pretty girl and an honest one, a cold beer and another one. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. <laughs>